Hello there! What I want to delight you with today is the color red and the meaning of the color red. Now, if you're an artist, painter or photographer and you want to start to use the color red, it is useful that you know what the color red can mean as a symbol or a connotation, so that you know what your viewers can be seeing, even if you didn't anticipate that. Also, if you yourself are looking at a typically autonomous photography work, eh, an art photograph, then you should know that usually these works are made from a very personal perspective and the colors that are used may be used for a certain reason. So if you want to demystify the meaning behind the photography, uh, the, the photo, it's good that uh, you understand what the red color may mean also for that photographer. So what is red? In nature we see that in most environments you have kind of everywhere green for the foliage and blue for the sky and there's little or no red. So if you want to be conspicuous then like these berries that want to get eaten you make yourself red. So a lot of animals in nature, like birds, insects, also humans, have developed a color vision mechanism where they have one kind of cell which is quite sensitive for these specific red wavelengths at the end of the visible wavelength spectrum, which means that this cell will respond very strongly and the others won't, and that immediately your brain from this behavior will see some highly conspicuous colors. So, Red, whoa, red is a very strong color. It can be even aggressive if you use it too much. All kinds of experiments have shown that if you're, for example, sitting in an entire room with red walls, enveloped by red, that your heart uh, rate can raise, that your blood pressure can raise. Even some experiments seem to show uh, uh, muscle contraction, testosterone and the like. So maybe if that's not your goal, if you're not selling a certain beverage for example and you don't want to raise the heart rate of the consumer and you just want to make a nice picture, painting or photo, maybe you want to be a little bit moderate with the amount of red. Now if you're watching this on a small mobile phone then it is probably not too much yet, it's bearable, but if you're watching this on a huge screen or projecting on an entire wall, it may be too much red here and you may want something more like this, where you just use a little bit of red at a certain position as a so-called color accent. It does make this otherwise dull grayish winter day much more interesting by having this little bit of red. This is actually what animals also do and they are not necessarily entirely red, but they use a little bit of red against other colors. For example, this butterfly, it uses quite a lot of interesting colors to make a spectacle for its mate or other butterflies. By the way, it's a contrasting color. The opposite color of red is green. So if you want to make your tomatoes look more red even, put them on top of a green piece of lettuce or something like that. So animals don't just use it to attract, for example, or impress their own species, but also to indicate that they may be poisonous or dangerous. For example, this is a quite poisonous mushroom. Don't eat it. Of course, also spicy things are not supposed to be eaten, but we developed as humans a taste for it. Like here you see in Espelette, the pepper village, you see them drying, or here the um, uh, locusts, which have been colored red also with some spices. Also flowers use the color red. Uh, for example, here you see very nice uh, patterns also on the flower, particularly for insects to find where they should land to get their goodies and collect some pollen. And these black colors are probably something in ultraviolet, which the insect can see and humans can't. So basically red is kind of everywhere. 
it's one of the molecules appearing in leaves often, that's why we get autumn. You have it here in beads, uh, you can color your cloth, some people do it actually with the molecules, the colorants of red beads. But still it was considered especially a very good uh, light, fast and strong red color. Sometimes had to come from sources which were more expensive like some uh, rocks or, or precious uh, rocks and also for example collecting a lot of insects and grinding them. So that's why it's usually a color of the rich not of the poor, at least it used to be because now any color can be made quite cheaply. And, but that still has connotations in our whole system of what proverbs we have and what meanings we give to the red color, secondary meanings. For example, the red carpet, which is something which you throw on the floor if you have high guests, not if you have so-called low guests. But then again, you also see in many countries barns which are red because they could be cheaply painted with rust or sometimes some other colors which were. So not always the red color has a clearly explicable reason. I, I, I couldn't imagine why this, uh, this is a baby oak tree starting to grow from the acorn, why this has to be red, because it doesn't say to anybody that it's poisonous or something. Uh, people know the acorn as something which is first green and then becomes brown, but inside there's a red, stru red structure. So everything has its color, sometimes it has a reason, sometimes it's accidental. Also the soil, so in some areas you have red, so you can make brown reddish colors from some of the soils. Especially another thing which becomes orange and red is the sunset, eh? orange and red here. And if you then illuminate the reddish soil with reddish light you get nicer reddish colors. It's not of course very strong red, that's something we will talk about later. Here again this uh, red clay villages here in Morocco or the bricks and, and roof tiles that some people know from their own city. And one of the important uh, starting points behind a lot of the meanings of red is the fact that red is the color of blood. So in a lot of cultures after white and black red is an important color because blood is seen as an important thing ritually and so on and so forth. For example here if we look at this mandrill monkey we see that uh, it has also nice uh, blue structures but it, it can make its nose red and the more blood the monkey has the healthier it is the more red its nose will become so already a competitor or a female can see from the color of the red whether it's somebody you want to fight or not. The same happens to humans. Eh? Um, we know that, for example, humans that uh, become a little bit shy or did something wrong or are lying or whatever, they may blush. Eh? Or also after alcohol consumption, especially some people will get a red head. And also sickness. Eh? You know that if you have a, a sting from some insect, especially uh, if you are, uh, if you have an immune response to it and you overreact, then you will get a strong red patch or even region around it. And also other kinds of diseases uh, lead to this so-called rubor uh, behavior of the skin, which is why that in a lot of cultures red can mean sick. Or also the opposite, get away of sick. And it rotates uh, to the opposite, uh, to, re to remove to repel bad uh, influences, sickness and the like. It's of course the color of meat or even uh, cooked shrimp. <clears throat> it is also traditionally taken to be the color of fire, although if you look at fires they are usually orange or yellow. You would need to add for example some metal to the fire or have a very low temperature uh, fire and then it would be red. But traditionally Red is taken uh, the color of uh, fire. Also some cultures look at the Japanese flag, uh, take the sun to be red and many cultures take it to be yellow. 
so fire so that uh, still remained in the color of many fire engines over the years or fire extinguishers and so on and so forth so red is basically the color of things like an angry face and, 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 and aggressiveness and dominance and also fire and, and destruction and so it became an aggressive color of the uh, clothes of soldiers already from Roman times until of course they discovered that it's better to be not so conspicuous but to use camouflage earth and, and, and plant uh, colored shirts but you still see it as a ceremonial color in those that will not get shot but just play music so that's a secondary meaning you can have further meanings eh? and and you also see this that we have one planet in our solar system which is kind of red the planet mars and it became mars is the god of war eh? it became identified again with war red is also taken to be the color of the devil eh? again fire and, and and redness although sometimes the devil is also green so, in general, colors can have positive and negative aspects. We already talked about, for example, the aspect of strength. Uh, red can show strength. And, and indeed, it has been shown in some experiments that uh, the team of a sports that plays with the red shirts may statistically win over the team that plays with the blue shirt, for example. We don't know exactly why. Is it because the people in the red shirt feel more confident? Or is it because the other people get a little bit more stopped eh, like a stop sign a traffic sign or whatever uh, warning sign we don't know exactly what the reason is but it seems that uh, if you want to win it may help just a tiny little bit by wearing a red shirt so everybody would want that interestingly also a further meaning eh, you can look like uh, if you think it looked like the V for Vendetta mask eh? so these meanings sometimes roll on top of each other and derive from each other in other cultures red may mean something else so for example in the Indonesian Topeng or mask uh, dance uh, red may be somebody illuminated by the, the, the strength of the sun eh? so it may be the hero for example but it may also be I don't think this one is a hero. Again, it may be an angry character also there. In China, you sometimes find entirely red painted uh, cities. There it can be the color of luck. Eh? For example, you can get a red envelope with money or something. Eh? It can be also happiness and the like. So, whereas in the West, uh, girls may want to uh, wear white, the color of virginity, etc. In uh, China, they may want to marry in a red bridal gown. Uh, and there are even uh, things like uh, painting eggs red for a child's first birthday to protect it against disease again and, and all the like. But it's also, the, of course, the color of communism, uh, first socialism. Uh, it was the blood and, 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 and the, the, the fight against uh, <clears throat> the establishment and, and the rich that became the signal, symbol of... Uh, socialism and later communism so also for that reason it's an important color in uh, china uh, and it's also uh, symbolically the, the color of the south and so on and so forth so here you see there's often a, a lot of red uh, uh, good luck kind of uh, packaging maybe more than in our cultures in the west japan kind of the same it's a powerful color to scare away evil for example so in in the temples or the gates of the temples or the tori which symbolize going from the normal world of the mere mortals to the, the religious world the holy world of the temple and you also want to paint that uh, kind of reddish or here with the votive bibs of kitsune the fox which is the animal of the spirit inari in Shintoism, which is uh, the spirit which was originally uh, for, for the rice, uh, to have a good harvest and then you're well fed and rich. Later on it became more uh, a spirit of business and the like. So yeah, if you want to have good business and good money, 
you may want to uh, give the fox a red bib. Also in Kabuki, uh, the theater, uh, if the, the face is painted with, with red uh, accents, then it may be the hero, but also anger. And the pink color, pink is a, is a kind of diluted with white, a dimmed down uh, red, which is used, for example, for little boys in some countries. And because it's the small, the not so strong red yet, and then it becomes a baby color. But in the West it also becomes a color which men would maybe not want to be associated with, a more feminine color. Interestingly, it depends on the country, because originally the Netherlands also had red for boys and blue, the color of Maria, for girls. But then they swapped it around, because uh, the pink became more of a girlish color over the years, which it is now. Here in India, we have, for example, the no and tilak dot on the forehead. I don't want to pretend I know very much about all the different uh, symbolic meanings that you have in this very, very big country where you have all kind of philosophies and so on and so forth. But if a, if a visitor like myself got a tilak dot on the head, I think it's a kind of welcoming uh, sign for uh, some good luck or something uh, for that visitor. But some other people may have other uh, connotations like the third eye or what have you. Here, for example, this is a famous uh, temple in Pushkar, a Brahma temple. Uh, I have read there are not so many Brahma temples uh, in India uh, for the god Brahma. And it has a, a very uh, conspicuous uh, special exotic red spire, because that is the color of the god Brahma. You see here in Varanasi, the Indians have lots of uh, color use. You see both an intense red temple and a pink temple next to each other, something you wouldn't easily see in the West. Uh, in medieval times, cathedrals were painted, but probably not so strong uh, colored like you have in, in, in this culture. A well-known colored city is also uh, Jaipur, which is called the Pink City because it has pinkish salmon-like salmon uh, colors. I've read that this only happened after uh, a visit of royalty, but anyway, now lots of the city is indeed uh, in this color, except for also other colors. Here we see it in Thailand, the temple, and the, the rich, important, uh, religious, strong colors are of course, gold and uh, red, as we see here again. But also everywhere else, also in the West, you can use the red for being conspicuous. And then you can use uh, the red for uh, a publicity uh, message. I've deleted the publicity message because it's not so interesting here. But this car will be noticeable from very far away. Or you could make your house uh, stand out bright red. This is the house in Freiburg where the merchants had to go for paying uh, their, uh, their fees to the custom. And uh, of course, uh, it's very hard to say that you didn't know where to go because this was the, the very red house. Huh? How could you miss it? And if you don't have your entire house red, you can always have these charming uh, shutters or, or something else. It also became in several countries because it's such a conspicuous color, the color for mailboxes, although in other countries they are, uh, for example, yellow. Or lighthouses, probably more symbolic again, because this is what you want to see in the night, mostly. And of course, the famous British phone boots, but also, for example, uh, in, in several countries, the bicycle lanes are painted red so that you can clearly see them and you're reminded that you should look out for bicycles. Here, people may want their taxi red. Huh? Maybe they get more customers like that or even the entire shop. It's also the color of love. Huh? 
women know that if you paint your lips red you may be more attractive there's also been research that women in a red dress are more sexy to men and men wearing red like a red tie are usually seen as dominant and of course associating with this red again the strawberry may be seen by several people as the fruit for lovers but also you have of course the red light district uh, where uh, <coughs> you uh, show another aspect of uh, so-called love and this is also an a very old uh, association because already the in the bible the whore of babylon had a red cloak it's also the color of luxury again the red carpet or even red walls and so on and so forth and the color of christmas now the story goes uh, father santa was uh, colored by the coca-cola company but on the other hand here in western europe in some regions we had already the so-called figure of saint nicholas and he was a bishop so he also has typically a red coat so now there are some animals which are called red although lots of people would say look this this red neat tarantula it's it's hardly red it's more like a very pale brown but it still gets the name red or also the snake which is more brown orange still gets the name red in its name so what is red actually is it just a very brilliant color we know as red red or is it a region around red of other colors well we can see that with a sector of color space if you put all colors from black to white and then we turn around this axis of lightness on the other side we would for example have the the greens and the blues and over here we would have oranges and yellows if we turn around if we turn in this direction we go towards the purples so that rotation direction i've taken only three planes here that rotation direction is called the u this amount of darker or lighter is called the lightness and then you have something which is called the saturation of the color it starts from almost no color in a colorless gray or white uh, looking or only a very small hint of color up to the deepest possible color that you can have pure color of a certain hue and no white mixed that are the dimensions and everything in this sector around the purest red which would be over here would be called for some people and it's of course a debatable issue where it ends although there are formalisms which put the end point at a certain agreed position all of these colors may be called in general reds of course if you go towards the orange where it starts becoming orange at a certain moment in between you have the oranges reds or also you could say the red oranges if you go towards the purple you have purplish reds if you go towards mixing more white with your color you get the so-called pastel colors and for reds we call these pinks now so the typical red is for example the red of the display the so-called srgb red that's this one now it's not redder than any other red because it's a very good red but it was technically chosen because of certain uh, technical aspects it could have been slightly more uh, purplish for example so it's not exactly the color that humans may call the reddest possible red but it's very close but if you go towards more oranges reds you get colors like for example the vermilion which was made from the cinnabar uh, rock or if you go to where the purple you get the red which is called crimson which was made from grounding kermes insects originally now these things can be made by uh, just chemical uh, means of course so if you uh, somewhat cheaper although you still have to do all the processing manner is getting red from the root of uh, the rubia plant and then you get the so-called madder uh, red which was still not so cheap in the old days because you needed all these plants and lots of uh, operations on it to get the color finally 
But then chemists, they discovered that the molecule which actually makes the color, it's called alizarin, and they can now make it very quickly in bulk in a chemical factory, so it's very cheap. Now you get a somewhat more, slightly more dark. So we go towards the dark, it's still a powerful color, but we go towards the darks. You can make uh, clothes with it. The exact color will depend, of course, on also how diluted, etc. you use the color. So if you go towards the, the pinks, you get these kind of halfway colors, like for example, Crayola company has made a lot of different colors, like this one, for example. Or you can go further, the typical pink. Uh, for example, the X11 system, which was one of the first computer uh, color systems, defines this kind of pink. You can go even by adding more white, you can get the misty rose it looks almost like mist indeed, more more white almost than uh, red, but it's still a kind of pink. In these areas you also have colors with more fabulous names like uh, Quiz de Neuf, which means uh, the tie of the nymph. So it's a very delicate pink, but yeah, if you start with names, then most people won't remember it. So it's better to have uh, a numerical system or something. Eh? You see here that the red, green and blue component are almost identical, which means that you almost have a white color. They, if they were really identical, you would have a color without any specific U in it, so it would be on the colorless axis of grays somewhere. And the height determines how light it is, so the fact that we are almost at 3 times 255 means that we have almost made a pure white. Whereas here you see that there's lots of red in it, but less blue and green. And here the perfect red has no green and blue. So that's pinks we can make, also variants of red. If we go down a little bit we can make, for example, a salmon pink. Now again I can have an entirely separate lecture on uh, the color of salmon, because it's usually colored according to the desires of a particular market. Some countries may want more oranges and more saturated uh, salmon, and some want uh, more pale salmon and so on. So there's entire systems for getting the color quite right. But this is what some people would call a salmon pink color. You can make it even darker, so it's, 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 it's still has a reddish appearance in it, but it's a called uh, rose val, it's a kind of ashy uh, color. Here you have the ashy pinks, so it looks a little bit gray. Huh? Not so, uh, first of all, not so light anymore, not so bright anymore, huh? and also not so saturated, not so pure red colored. Huh? It becomes more grayish, more ashy. And then if you still these do have uh, quite some red in it, because for example Oxblood it is still pure red and no green and blue mixed in it. So no, if you mix green and blue you get towards the grey axis, you add actually a colorless uh, grey. But in fact the other thing is if you darken also the colorfulness, the saturation of the colors uh, starts looking less and less. So here you have uh, colors like rosewood, for example, or what one would also call the burgundy colors uh, after the wine. And for example, Cordovan, uh, kind of leather color. So you have all the colors now. You can start working with it. You can now identify them. Uh, this would be kind of an oxblot like uh, red. Uh, this would be kind of a salmon uh, coral kind of red. This is called the red built toucan, but again it's almost more purplish, a kind of burgundy-like purplish. And here you have something like our Quiz de Nave or Misty Rose, a very frail rose kind of red. All of these are in the general family of red, where of course the strong reds will be used to have a powerful impression, and these colors can be used in art or photography to have some soft gentle aspects, but still, because red is such a powerful color, even rose, by uh, even pink by itself, has a separate name and, and has a, somehow a, a somewhat strong impression still. 
here the last photo to show that what actually we call blackberries they're actually red but if you add a lot of red then all the light is absorbed anyway and it will become so strong that it will look black so thanks everybody this is it for this time if you found it interesting i hope you enjoy all my other uh, videos which are about not just colors but also how to use perspective techniques in your photos i will upload uh, things about how you use lighting in your art and the correct lighting both technically how to expose but also to make a visually interesting picture and so on and so forth so hope to see you next time and if you could subscribe that would be nice because if i know that people are interested i will make be motivated to make lots of more uh, movies and if nobody is then i will make less okay bye guys bye